Hallelujah. Continue to praise and magnify the Lord. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Don't stop. Don't stop. Don't stop. We can't stop praising the Lord for all that he's done. He's given us the breath of life. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We worship and adore your name, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the breath of life today. Thank you, Lord, that we are standing, O oh Lord, not by our might, O oh Lord, but by your grace, O oh Lord, by your spirit, O oh Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that in you we live and move, O oh Lord, and have our very being, O oh Lord. We thank you, Lord. The Bible says, for we walk not in flesh as more metal, as mortal men, we are not carrying on our spiritual warfare according to the flesh and using the weapons of man. The weapons of our warfare are not physical. They're weapons, they're not weapons of flesh and blood. Our weapons are divinely powerful for the destructions of fortresses. So this morning, we're going to use the weapons that God has given us today. It is not, it's not how men, how the world do it, but we're going to do it according to the word of God, which says in Matthew 16, verse 19, it says, in Matthew 16, 19, it says, and I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. The amplified version of that, um, of that scripture says, I will give you the keys, the authority of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind, forbid, declare, uh, declare to be improper and unlawful and on earth will have already been bound in heaven and whatever you lose permit de permit the next verse permit declare lawful on earth has and have already been loosed in heaven hallelujah so this morning today by the authority of the word of god we bind we declare improper unlawful for us KICC and anyone who has entered today or is listening to us today we bind sickness in the name of Jesus we bind disease in the name of Jesus we bind depression in the name of Jesus we, de we bind oppression in the name of Jesus any lack any lack any poverty in our life by the word of God we bind it today in the name of Jesus Jesus. Stagnation is found in the name of Jesus. Lack of progress is found in the name of Jesus. Unemployment, unemployment, lack, no job in the name of Jesus. We bind it for all in the name of Jesus. Arabashete, any disappointment in your mind, any disappointment in your mind, we in the name of Jesus this morning and it then goes on to say and whatever not me whatever you lose whatever you permit whatever you declare lawful on earth will already have been loosed in heaven amen so today by the authority of the word of Jesus, we lose, we permit, we declare useful in our lives. Exceeding joy is our portion in the name of Jesus. Exceeding peace is our portion in the name of Jesus. We, we declare loose. We, we permit uncommon favor comes to us, O oh Lord. Uncommon breakthrough is our portion, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. And our sister was praying, uncommon blessing, every spiritual blessing are in heavenly places is ours today in the name of Jesus. Abundance, 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 abundance for every good word is our portion in the 
ICC. The Lord has blessed them. Amen. The Lord has blessed them. The blessing of the Lord, not your own blessing, but the blessing of the Lord is on your head, is in your hand as you walk in the name of Jesus. That will be our testimony. We thank you, Lord. We give you praise, Lord. We thank you. We give you praise. We honor you. We magnify your name in the mighty, 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 mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, welcome again as you take your seat. Welcome. Welcome. It's great to be in the house of the Lord. And as Brother Festus was saying, you know, hey, God, God is not unjust to, to forget your, your, your step of faith, your commitment. You know, hey, it was raining yesterday. Boy, did it rain or did it rain? It rained. I don't know where you were, but it was raining. Amen. Showers of blessing. It wasn't even showers. It was, it was blessing raining down. Amen. Amen. But I'm so glad that you're here. Amen. And God will reward you for your commitment. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Well, welcome to KICC. The home of champions where we raise champions and we take territory for the kingdom of god you're you're in the empowerment center amen and uh, as brother first also was saying this this is our month of fulfillment of promises amen hallelujah and god will fulfill all the promises that he had and this is our year of more than enough hallelujah you have more than enough it may look a little bit tight now, but you have more than enough. You just need to be, you know, Pastor, Pastor Master always says, our God, our Jehovah, overdue, overdue. He says he's overdue, he overdoes it exceedingly, abundantly above anything that we may think or um, even dream of. Amen. And this is part two of our message, Blessing on Your Hands. Um, last week, we, we, we prayed, we... Um, we prophesied, we, uh, your hands were anointed, amen. amen. And, I, and I said, you know, you should go out and go and do something. Yeah, this week I did that. I went out to go and start something new, amen. I hope you did the same as well, amen. Mm, some of you, I know that, that section is a bit quiet. Uh, I must come over there. I must come and ask you individually. I'm coming to, I'm coming to you, <laughs> amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So our last week's message was Baraka Mikononi Wangu. Yeah. But today we're going to look at it from another angle. And um, 
you know. Um, and before I start, let me just say, you know, appreciation to Pastor Fred. Um, I can confidently say that next week he will be standing here. <laughs> I'm sure he, he, he was uh, feeling a little itchy yesterday. He didn't know what to do with himself. You know, I'm teasing him every, every Sunday when I'm up here as well. He must be saying, ah, something, I'm supposed to be doing something. Why am I not doing something? Amen. Thank you, Pastor Fred. Amen. Today is going to be a little bit quieter than last week. That's okay. Not because it's raining and it's wet. Amen. But it's going to be nice. You know, in Greece, we say siga siga. And what do you say? You say pole pole. Is it pole pole? So it's going to be a little bit pole pole today. Is that not? Yeah, pole pole. Okay. My soil is coming along. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Exodus 4, 1 to 5. Exodus 4, 1 to 5. Then Moses answered and said, But suppose they will not believe me or listen to my voice. Suppose they say, the Lord has not yet, has not appeared to you. Verse 2. So the Lord said to him, what is that in your hand? He said, and he said, this is Moses, a rod. And he said, cast it on the ground. Verse 3. So he cast it on the ground and it became a serpent, and Moses fled from it. Then the Lord said to Moses, reach out your hand, take it by, it by the tail. And he reached out his hand and caught it, and it became a rod in his hand. Verse 5 then says, and that they may believe that the Lord God of their fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, has appeared to you. Heavenly Father, we're just so grateful. We're so grateful for this time, O oh Lord. Thank you, Lord, that the entrance of your word, it brings light, it brings illumination, it brings life, O oh Lord, Father. It, it dispels darkness, O oh Lord. Thank you, Lord. We pray, O oh Lord, that this morning, O oh Lord, your word will bring light, O oh Lord, to us, O oh Lord. We'll bring revelation, O oh Lord. We'll open our eyes. We'll dispel doubts and, and, and darkness, O oh Lord, in our lives, O oh Lord. Lord, we're so thankful, O oh Lord, today. More of you, O oh Lord, and less of me. O oh Lord, let your word, let your will, let your word come out with fire, O oh Lord. A rhema word for, for somebody today, O oh Lord. Let all the glory, let all the honor, O oh Lord. Let it go to your name and you alone, O oh Lord. We're so thankful, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. You see, so in the preceding chapter... Moses ha was was going about his normal business. He was he was um, in, in, we, we started in um, we read from Exodus four, but just in Exodus three, you know, he was tending to the flocks of his um, of his father-in-law Jethro, and the angel of the Lord appeared to him, and God appeared to him, and the Lord outlined the great commission. He said that, you know, he would deliver and lead out about three million Israelites, you know, men and women and children and their dogs and their cats and everything, you know, out of Egypt, Egypt to a designated land. And, you know, in, in Exodus 3.11, if we go back a little bit, Moses, Moses responds like this. Exodus 3.11, he says, but Moses said to God, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh, and that I should bring the children of Israel out of Egypt. Moses was saying, <laughs> Lord, um, maybe you've got the wrong person. Uh, do you mean me? Who am I? Me, me, me. Go and, or, or, or are you referring to somebody else to go to Pharaoh to lead them out of Egypt? Uh, oh, and he was actually saying, you know, God, uh, are you for real? You know, is this a joke or that's what he was saying in that, in that scripture um, passage as well. In Exodus 3.13, the Bible then goes on to say, Then Moses said to God, Indeed, when I come to the children of Israel and say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you. The, and they say to me, What is his name? What shall I say to them? Basically, God was saying, who are you really? You know, who was the one? Who, who are you? Who are you? What am I going to say that? Oh, somebody has come, you know, to, to now release 
all of these people who 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 what's your name and who who are you really that uh, that your saying has sent me to go do do this as well then in exodus 4 1 where we started from now then most then moses answered and said but suppose they do not believe me or listen to my voice suppose they say the lord has not appeared to you what if they don't believe me i can't convince them that's what moses was asking okay even you've given me you, your name you've uh, you've said that you know no i'm i'm not confirming that look moses you are the one i've seen all of you you are the one that was sending and even when you go there tell them that okay it is me the great i am who i am the great i am and you know that's what you're supposed to say then then moses goes further and says hey so what if they don't believe me and I can't convince them? What if they ignore, uh, ignore my voice? He says, they don't believe me or listen to my voice because Moses was a stammerer. He was stammering. So if they will say, oh, what is this guy who's gibberish? What is he saying? He's stammering, you know. What, 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 what if they don't hear my voice? And, what, and the other thing he said that it, it says here is that, or suppose they say, the Lord has not appeared to you. Basically, what Moses was saying that, they might even say that, oh, you are lying. The God has not appeared to you. You're lying. That's what Moses is asking. And, you know, this is a, this is a great man of Moses, you know, the great man, uh, Moses, who God, who God spoke to face to face. He had all of these doubts about himself. He was basically saying, you must have the wrong person. I don't have the talent. I don't have the, I don't have the tools. You don't, I don't have the tools. You haven't given me the tools. You, uh, I don't have the tongue. I don't even have the credibility. You know, I don't have what it takes to accomplish this huge task and be successful in the assignment that you have, gi that you have given. Has anyone been there before? Has anyone been there before? Has anyone had those thoughts? You haven't had those thoughts? Let me put my hands up. You haven't had those thoughts? I think you need to come and lay your hand on my head. So you haven't had those thoughts at all? You've been confident about everything. You haven't had any doubts at all? Wonderful. There you have. You've had doubts. Yeah, we've had doubts. We've all had doubts. We've all had, we've all questioned certain things, you know, certain things in that, you know, uh, you've had thoughts about um, what is before you or what you're seeing and you're sensing in your spirit that God is putting in your sins. He says, oh my goodness, this is big. How am I going to do this? Or so on, whatever. We've all been there. But what is the Lord's response to all of this from Moses? What is the Lord's response? The Lord's response is found in Exodus 4, 2. So the Lord said to him, what is that in your hands? And he said, a rod. What a statement. After all of these things that I'm saying, God, you're saying, what is that in your hand? And he said, a rod. God heard all of this, but answered with a simple question. What is that in your hand, Moses? So I want you to turn to your neighbor, turn, them, turn to your neighbor, look, look to them in their eyes, you know, as they say in Nigeria, look to, in their eyes, crow, 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 straight, 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 straight. And you should say this, ti ine sto herisu. Yeah. Ti ine sto herisu. Do you know what that means in Greek? What is in your hands in Greek? Amen. Or in, in Swahili, I, Sister Evelyn, I'm not quite sure this was the right translation, but when I translated it, it says, Nini, 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 Mokononi, Mwanko. Is that right? Nini, 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 Mokononi, Mwanko. Okay, I knew that it was all wrong. My speed, yeah, is that right? Oh, almost. Almost okay. What 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 is it in Swahili? I want to ask the part of it. Ni ni ni. Ni ni ni. Okay, okay. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So turn to your neighbor. What is in your hand? Hallelujah. What is in your? So the title of our message today is "What is in your hands?" Amen. You see, Moses was concerned 
and he was consumed by his inabilities. He was consumed by his inabilities. His status at the time he was a shepherd, you know, he'd been in the shepherd by this time he'd done about 40 years because God, at this point, God appeared to him when he was about 80. You know, he had a past and he was basically saying, Lord, don't you know, I killed somebody in over there and I ran to the desert and you want me now to go back to lead all of these people? You know, he was saying, you know, I can't go there. He's passed. And, and he was saying, what would people say? They would be saying, oh, who are you? Look at you. Who, who gave you authority to come here in this place? And you're not even, you, you that are coming, you're talking, you're a shepherd, whatever. You're not even, you're coming into this place and you're not talking like a graduate who's got a first, uh, first class degree or, you know, you don't have the business acumen or you don't have your suit. You, do, you, know, you turned up in an Uber, you don't have a car. So you're not, you're not qualified for this kind of thing that we're doing. Yeah? He was thinking about that because he was a shepherd, being away, and whatever. And we, we, we don't believe that even if you come, we don't believe that you can do this job or you can take on this responsibility. That's what they were. That's what they were, he, was, he was rolling in his head about as well. And, and, you know, Moses was preoccupied, preoccupied um, with, his, with his past, because of where he'd been and what he had done. And he had been preoccupied with his future, the future that God is laying down. He said, okay, well, you don't know who I am. Don't you, don't you remember all of these things that I've done? And even if, you, if I'm going to do all of these things, I don't have this bit, I don't have that bit. Da, 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 what if they don't? Da, 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 da. And that was what was preoccupying um, Moses' mind. Yet, the Lord brought his focus back to one thing, to the present. Because the Lord said, you know, hey, you're talking about your past, you're talking about whatever. He brought his focus and said, okay, what's that in your hands right now? What is that in your hands right now? What's in your hands now? What do you possess now? What do you have now? Because God always uses what we have right now. Amen. For that future, he always used them. We're going to be looking at it. He always used. So you know, despite you know, you're worrying about ah, what has happened in the past, what has happened in the future. Talking about now, because you know what, faith is what faith is. Now, faith is now. Yeah, faith is is now. It's present. It's what you do now and whatever as well. So that's what God was saying. That I heard all of this talk that you're talking. Da 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 da. But what do you have in your house, in your hand right now? Amen. And let's look at some of the other examples and we will come back to Exodus and what is God showing us through this, through the, what God wants us to understand through this passage. But let's look at some of the other examples. In 1 Samuel 17, 40, 40 this is the story of, of, um, of David, of course. In 1 Samuel um, uh, 17, 40, verse 40, he said, Then he took his staff, he took his staff in his hand, and he chose for himself five smooth stones from the book, and he put them in a shepherd's, in a shepherd's bank, in a pouch which he had, in a pouch which he had, and his sling was in his hand. And he drew to the Philistine. Philistine. Verse, um, and then if we go on to 1 Samuel 17, 49 to 50, it then says, Then David put his hand in his bag, took out a stone, took out a stone, and slung it and struck the Philistine in his, in his forehead, so that the stone sank in his forehead, and he fell on his face, on his, on the, uh, on the face of the, on, on his face to the, to the earth. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and a stone and struck the Philistine and ki killed him. But there was no sword in the hand of David. David prevailed against a great giant with what he had, a sling and a stone. 
He did not possess the, a sword, but it, because when he was going, he did not possess a sword. And even when, when, um, when King uh, Saul tried to put on an armor on him, he said, look, I haven't tested this. You know, this doesn't, I've never been used to all of this. It's not something that I've had before. This is what I've had. This is what I have, the sling and the stone. Second example, Second, uh, 1 Kings 17, um, 11 to 16. 1 Kings 17, 11 to 16. And she was going to get it, and he called her and said, Please bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. Carry on. And she said, As the Lord, as the Lord your God lives, I do not have bread. Only, I do not have bread. Only a handful of flour and a little oil of jar. And see, I am gathering a couple of sticks that I may go in and prepare for myself and my son that we may eat and die. Amen. Verse 13. And Elijah said to her, do not fear. Go and do as you have said. But make me a small cake from it first and bring it to me and afterward make some for yourself and your son. Amen. Verse 14. For thus says the Lord of Israel, the bin of flour shall not be used up, nor, the sm nor, nor shall the jar of oil run dry until the day of the Lord sends the rain on earth. So she went away and did according to the word of Elijah. She and her household ate for many days. Verse 16 says, the bin of flour was not used up, nor did the jar of oil run dry according to the word of God which he spoke by Elijah. Amen? Amen? Example number three. 2 Kings 4, 1 to 2. 2 Kings 4, 1 to 2. It says, A certain woman of the wives of the son of, El of, of the prophets cried out to Elisha, saying, Your servant, my husband, is dead. And you know that your servant feared the Lord, and the creditor is coming to take my my two sons to be his slave. Amen. And then Elisha said to her, what shall I do for you? He did not wait for a response. When she was saying, da, 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 da. he said, what shall I do for you? He didn't even wait for a response. He said, tell me, what do you have in your house? And she said, your maid servant has nothing in the house but a jar of oil. Amen? Hallelujah. Judges 15, 1 to 16. This is the story of Samson. Um, Samson. He found, uh, 15 said, he found a fresh jawbone of a donkey, reached out his hand and took it and killed a thousand men with it. And Samson said, with the jawbone of a donkey, heaps upon heaps, with the jawbone of a donkey, I have slain a thousand men. Hallelujah. Amen. Example number five. John 6, 5 to 9. Amen. John 6, 5 to 9. Then Jesus lifted up his eyes and seeing a great multitude coming towards him, he said to Philip, what shall we buy? where shall we buy bread that these may eat? But verse 6 then says, but he said, to and, he, and he said this to test him, for he himself knew what he would do. Verse 7. Philip answered him, said, 200 denarii worth of bread is not sufficient for them, that every one of them may have a little. Amen. Verse 8. One of this is his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, There is a lad here who has five barley loaves, uh, five barley loaves and two small fish. But what are they among so many? Amen. We're going somewhere. Example number six. So you see, as a, as a lawyer's pastor, Fred was saying about his son, you know, I'm laying down all my evidence, all the whatever. Okay, we're coming back. Okay. All right. Example number six. Luke three, Luke five, three to six. Luke five, three to six. And then he got into one of, okay. Luke 5, 3 to 6. 
It says, then this is, this is when Jesus was preaching. Okay, here we go. There we go. Then he got into one of the boats, which was Simon's, and asked him to put out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the multitudes from the boat. When he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon, launch out into the deep and let, your net, and let down your nets for a, ca for a catch. But Simon answered and said, him, said to him, Master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the nets. And when they had done this, they caught a great number of fish and their net was breaking. Amen. There's other examples. There's also the example of Gideon. Gideon, who was given, who was given a task to um, somebody who was the least of the family and all of this kind of stuff when the, the task was given to him. And he was saying this to the Lord. But you know, he initially had 22,000 men who were going to go and fight. And the Lord said, well, those are too many. Brought it down to 10,000. And then he eventually brought it down to 300 men. And those are the ones that went to go and fight. So time will not allow us to go through some of the other ex examples. But these demonstrate this one thing, that God always provides and accomplishes and blesses through what we have, what is in our hands. Amen? Amen. And returning to, you know, the scripture that we, our foundational scripture that we used last week and this week, Exodus 4. God asked this question, what is in your hand? And go, gave those instructions to Moses, you know, to help him understand a few things. To help him understand a few things as well. And I'm here and I'm going to just, we're just going to try and just go through the, the what, what was God showing Moses and what is God showing us through this example number one God was showing Moses and he's showing us this that God has given all of us all of us all of us all of us something in our hands amen amen these are blessed hands and God has given all of us something in our hands because you see, all through all the examples we're reading, they all had something. But God is the one that first gave them to us. And God has given all of us, no matter, no matter your level of education, no matter where, which the remotest village in Kenya that you were born, or you were born in or whatever, God, when you were created, God has placed something and has given us something. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. The second thing is, you know, and this is related to the first one. You always have something on you, in you, or around you for your prosperity, for your progress, for your purpose. No matter how bad it looks. No matter how bad it looks. You have something in you, you have something on you, you have something around you for your progress, for your business, for what God, for the purpose that God has called you to. It is there. Exodus 3, 5 says, and he said, um, you know, in Exodus 3, 5, when Moses was called initially, you know, in Exodus 3, 5, he said, and he said to him, do not, do not draw near this place. Take your sandals off your feet, for this place where you stand is holy ground. Moses took off his sandals. When he um, and when he approached, he, you know, he took off his sandals. But you know what? Moses did not let, let go of the rod that he was holding. He still had something in his hands. He took off his sandals when he said, take off your sandals, it's a holy place. He took all of that. But he was still holding on to something. Amen? Hallelujah. And you know, um, the, the, the widow had a jar of oil. It was nothing in her eyes, but it was something in God's eyes. The woman had still had a, a bin of flour and a bin of oil, you know. And she thought, okay, you know what, I don't have, the question was, I don't have bread. The, 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 the servant of God said, okay, make me a little cake. Amen. She still has something. You know, the, the rod, the jar may, have, may seem insignificant in our own eyes, but in the eyes of God, they are mega. Amen. 
And, it, and, and that's all he needs. That's all he needs. Amen? You know, stones that, you know, um, David gathered in his bag. That's, what, that's all God needed. Amen? And the, and the great thing about our God is, is this, uh, is that if we keep on asking and seeking and knocking, he always adds to what is in our hands. Amen? So you shouldn't stop asking and seeking and knocking. So tell your neighbor, because they might be sleeping now, tell your neighbor, I have something. I have something. And it is mighty. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. The third thing that, um, that God was trying to um, show Moses and is telling us today is in Exodus 4, 3. It says, and he said, cast it on the ground. So he cast it on the ground and it became a serpent and Moses fled from it. You know, Moses fled from the serpent I am so I'm I'm sure that he was in the wilderness. Moses had encountered many separate, um, serpents and, and snakes before. That's probably why he had the rod to sell, sort of. I'm sure he he encountered. It wasn't it wasn't anything unusual, amen. But and I'm sure he was a strong and a brave man. He fled not only because the serpent was a symbol, as I was saying last week, a symbol of, of the royal crown on authority. He fled because before him was a transformation of something that was dead into a living thing. And he would say, oh my goodness, this thing that is dead that I just whatever, look at it, it was transformed into a living thing species but the key to the transformation is this god said to him he said cast it on the ground god is saying is that there will be no trans there will be transformation when we release it first to him there will be transformation when we first release it that's why he said cast it on the ground and when you cast it on the ground, you're casting it and, you know, you're releasing it to him. You know, transformation of what, what seems little into much happens when we release it to God first. Our talent, our time, our treasures, you know, when we release it, you know, those tokens of our, those blessings that he's given us as well. And we see that in the example of the boy with the five loaves and the fish. Because he gave, it to the, he gave it to the disciples and Jesus offered it up to the Lord first. There was transformation that these could feed 5,000 men, let alone the women. Peter, you know, and, 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 and Jesus, because he cast his boat and he gave it and he released it to the Lord first and foremost. There was transformation. Transformation where something that was dead and they toiled all night and they haven't found whatever. But because he, he, he released it to the Lord first and acknowledged the Lord first and whatever, then there was a transformation. The bin of flour that we were looking at, you know, in that example, the, um, Elijah said, you know, make me first a cake from it. And then you make for yourself. Because she released it first to the Lord, there was transformation. Amen? And God is saying to us, and it's just like the word says in John 12, 24. Most, uh, John 12, 24 says, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains alone. Um, it remains alone. But if it dies, it produces much grain. And you see, what we have, our jobs, the salary, the business, the contracts, they are seeds for greater things. They are seeds for greater things. And we must offer them first unto the Lord. And from it, then you have all these tremendous, mind-blowing transformation, the growth and the success that will follow. Amen. 
So it's, it's something that, you know, we really need to renew our mind on. That, you know, whatever we're doing, whatever God has blessed us to, you know, we must give it to the Lord. We must cast it. We must release it to the Lord. We must ask the Lord. You know, that's why the Bible says, you know, commit your day, commit your plans to the Lord first. Whatever you're going to do, pay your tithes first out of it. When you do the, the first, you know, the rest is blessed. Because what you're saying is that, Lord, you gave me this, and Lord, I'm now giving what you said, only 10% back to you. And I can tell you, you know, many, many a times, people will see, they say, okay, but how are you prospering? Is it not the same salary that me, are, you and I are on? They say, no, you don't know. Hmm. I give first to the Lord, and whatever is left, he blesses. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And so this is what God was also trying to show Moses as well. And you know, when we say, and the fourth thing, when we say casting of it to the ground, means that Moses did not have control of it. God must have control of what we have. We must yield it totally to him. Amen. Because when he cast it to the floor, he had no control. He yielded it to the, to the, and this is what God was also trying to tell Moses, that I must have control of what you have. Amen? Hallelujah. So when we yield our, yield it to God, our business, our work, our schooling, our pursuits, and our gifts, just like a Peter yielded his boat to Jesus, he, he gave control of it to Jesus. Amen? And not only that, he then followed the instruction that God and um, Jesus then gave him that, okay, now launch into the deep and whatever as well, because he handed control. So, you know, when we're praying about our jobs and all of this kind of stuff and our contracts and all of that, we need to yield it to the Lord. We need to say, Lord, take control of this. Speak to me on how you want me to do it, not the way I want to do it. And this is what God was also showing Moses when he said, cast it to the ground. I must, he's saying, I must have control of it. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. When he said, make, make me the first, um, the, the cake first. She did not, she did not, she did not, and this is the, an important thing that we need to bear in mind. She did not do the opposite or quickly. She didn't, in, in, when, when she heard the instruction, she didn't say, okay, my son, you know that man? We only have a little bit of flour and a little bit of oil. Those men, those men of God, they, you know, they, they, they don't have any, any empathy. They don't have any whatever. You know, so let, me, let us just have a little bit. I'll give you some so me and you can eat first and then we'll give the rest. No. She followed the instruction. Follow the instruction as well. And, you know, we must also follow the instruction, you know. He didn't, she didn't do that out of sight. We, and yielding according to it, and we must yield according not only to his, his instructions, but to his ways and his practice. The Bible says in Proverbs 20, verse 10, it says, Diverse weights and diverse measures, they are both alike an abomination to the Lord. So we cannot act in a dishonest, unholy, deceitful way and say that we have yielded our business and the work of our hands to the Lord and we pray that the Lord bless the work of our hands and that's why you can't be taking bribe in your office you can't be um, taking the backhanders or whatever and then you're saying hey Lord hey bless the work of my hands no because if you truly yield it to the Lord, the you know, Lord will ask you to do it in the way that he wants to do it. And don't forget, the Bible says his ways are higher than ours. So he might give you an instruction and he's laid it down on what we should and what we shouldn't do and whatever. But he knows and it yields to a lot more. And there are many times we've done certain things and we know that, oh, you know, it is all broken down or it's all gone wrong or whatever. And we know in ourselves that, you know, it's because we did not do it right. We did not work, we did not work and work hard and well and smartly and whatever as well. We did not, you know, so, and it's important. That, and, you know, we have the example for even Moses. When Moses said, speak to the rock, you know, Moses, you know, out of anger, as I was saying last week, you know, he, he used the thing and he hit the thing twice. And, you know, God honored him, the water came out and whatever. But, you know, Moses 
pay dearly for that because he did not follow that instruction. And he was doing it his own way. When God's way was, do it this way. Amen? Hallelujah. And the last thing I wanted to say on this is a little, that what God was getting Moses to understand and he's trying to get us to understand is this, that, you know, no matter what, he's always with us. He sees, he hears, he knows. David and his stone, you know, uh, you know when, when, when David, you know, when he pulled the, the sling and that stone hit um, hit Goliath. Normally, when you a stone hits somebody, you're supposed to fall backwards. But this Goliath fell forward because I believe that the hand of God was behind uh, Goliath. So when the thing was, I said, right now you're down on the floor. Yeah, Amen. You know, and you know, God was with Mo Moses always. You know, and that rod spoke in the Red Sea, in the desert. You know, the victory over uh, the Amalekites, as we were as we were looking um, last week. And you know, in these in these economic times and these seasons, and Pastor Massey was praying about the valleys this week. God is reminding you and I that He is still present with us in our work, in our business, as we strive for excellence. He's not abandoned you. Because the thing is a little, is difficult and whatever, it's not working out, you know, God is still there with you. He hears, he knows, he sees, amen? Hallelujah. And that's also what, what God was saying to, to Moses that, you know, I am with you. Wherever I'm sending you with this, with whatever is in your hand, there will be transformation with what you're doing because the Lord was with him, amen? Hallelujah. The Bible says in Deuteronomy 31, 8, it says, And the Lord, and the Lord, he is the one who goes before you. He will be with you. He will not leave you nor forsake you. Do not fear or nor be dismayed. So as I begin to round up and before we go into a prayer session, a short prayer session, the Bible, let me remind you all, of the following and these are the things that god laid on my heart to share with you even more psalm 37 7 says my brothers and sisters rest in the lord and wait patiently for him do not fret because of him who prospers in his way and you're seeing all of those people doing all manner of things or whatever because because of the man who brings wicked schemes to pass because the bible says Job 8, 7. Though your beginning was small, yet your latter end will increase abundantly. Amen. Hallelujah. And the Bible says in Micah 5, 2. But you, Bethlehem, Ephrathah, though you are little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of you shall come forth to me this one to be ruler in Israel, who goes forth, um, who goes forth are from of old and from everlasting. Amen. My brothers and sisters, Second Peter 1 3 says, and his divine power has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us to glory and virtue. Amen. You see, and when they when they deride you and they mock you and say, Who are you? Where are your qualifications? Where are your abilities? Where, you know, you, 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 you don't fit the type of person that can do this. You will say and remember this. In 1 Corinthians 1, 27 to 8, it says, But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to put to shame the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to put to shame the things which are mighty. Verse 28, and the base things of the world and the things which are despised, God has chosen. So they may despise you, but God has chosen you. Amen. And the things which are not to bring to nothing the things that are. Amen. So whatever God has given you or is giving you, my brothers and sisters, Ecclesiastic 9.10 says, whatever your hand finds to do, 
do it with your might, for there is no work or device or knowledge or wisdom in the grave where you are going. The Bible says in Colossians 3, 23 to 24, and whatever you do in that workplace, in that business, in that education, whatever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not to men, knowing that from the Lord you will receive the reward of your inheritance, for you serve the Lord Christ. Amen? Hallelujah. And finally, you may be saying, Brother Moses, you don't know. I, you don't know. I, I don't know if I have anything. I don't see it yet. And I don't know if I have, I have what, 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 what I need. Let me tell you a, a quick story. And this is a real story. Um, three, four weeks ago, I went to, um, I was, I went to, um, I was in the UK and my, my, my son was saying, you know, we were going to go to KICC. Oh, Pastor Matthew, forgive me. I didn't go to KICC on that Easter Sunday. But I went to my son's church because he was saying, dad, 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 you must come, you must come, you must come. He said, oh, I've even told the pastor that, you know, my dad is coming and whatever. And it, it was about a 90 minute drive to his church. So we went and with my other sons and we went and whatever. And then the pastor got up and he was saying, oh, da, 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 uh, during, the pre during the sermon. And the pastor was saying, oh, you know, um, you know, some of our members, they went somewhere and they prayed for something or whatever. I said, oh, wow, praise the Lord, da, 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 and whatever. And then as we were going back, and my son was in the car, all three of them, we were driving back. And my, my, my son, I won't mention which one, Pastor Fred knows which one it is. You know, he said, said oh, you know, Dad, you know that thing that the pastor was talking about? He was, said, oh, it was my friend and, a friend and, and um, my friend and I, we, we were the one involved. I said, really? So I shut up my mouth when I was driving. I said, okay. So in the evening, I then called him into the room. I said, okay, so tell me what happened. Because I wanted to, and you will understand why I'm saying this in a second. So he said, you know, they've been praying. Um, and they've been, they had a theme called the upper room experience. And they've been praying for about 60 days, going to services every day. Every day, turning up at the service, every day, and he said, and you know, and he said there was this week where we've been praying, Joel, Joel two twenty eight, which says, and I will pour out my spirit on the young men, you know, and all of that. You know what he says there, you know. And so after one prayer service, they um, they got home, they got to the house, and you know, it was at eleven thirty at night, and. One, um, and, and they were just talking, he and his friend were just talking, and they were saying, ah, you know, but we've been praying this prayer. God pray, pour out your, your spirit upon us and all of that. But we know we need to manifest it. We need to manifest it. It's not just prayer. And he said, this was at 11.30, and he said, okay. Then we went to a time of prayer for about an hour and a half, and then around 10 to 1 o'clock, 12.50, they decided. They said, okay, you know what? We're going to the hospital. And so they went to the local hospital that was just by them, about two, three minutes walk. And they went into the accident and emergency ward. And they saw all of these people. And they saw one lady, they went to her. She said, oh, how are you? And they said, oh, why are you here? She said, oh, um, you know, I, I came here. And, um, you know, I've just been told to come straight to the, to the hospital because I have four blood clots on my lungs. Blood clots can be dangerous. Dr. Nella is not here. Blood clots that, that block the transmission and it can lead to heart attack, life-threatening. And this lady, she's, they said, oh, you know what? Can we pray for you? We're Christians, whatever. And they laid hands on her and they prayed for her. And afterwards she said, okay, well, thank you very much and whatever. And she said, oh, you know, thank you. You know, maybe I feel a little bit better, but I still got to go and see the doctor. And he then, she then turned around to them and said, okay, you know, go further in. There are many other people in there and whatever. And they walked into where all these other people were and they stooped up and they said, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we don't want to disturb you or something along those lines, but, you know, we are Christians and we believe that Jesus can heal. So we have come to pray for you. Can you allow us to pray for you? They stood up in a hospital in the UK and they announced this to all of them. And then they started praying for them. 
groups of five, and they were praying and whatever as well. Then at, at some stage, one of the security guards said, look, some people are, are uncomfortable, so you need to now leave. And they said, okay, thank you. But before we go, you know Jesus loves you, security guard, and you can be saved if you, if you give your life to him. And then they left. They didn't help. The following day, they were in, they were in the, um, a square, uh, a town square, and they were evangelizing. And then a woman runs up to them and says, hey, you guys, you were the ones that were um, in, the, in the hospital yesterday. You prayed for my, you were praying for whatever. You don't remember me? Say, oh yeah, I remember you were sitting with that lady. Said, yeah. She said, after you guys left, the woman then went in to go and do her tests and do her whatever. The woman that they prayed for that had these four blood clots on her lungs. And you know, when they went and did the test, they could not find any blood clots. And so she's coming to tell them that, you know, and so the woman was really said, go home. The person who had blood clots, they prayed and whatever as well. Amen. So I'm saying this to you, that if you have, just like Peter and John said in Acts 3, 6, Peter said, silver and gold I do not have. But what I have, I give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. But because you have something greater than anything else, you have the name and the power of Jesus. Because the Bible then says, Philippians 2, 9, 11, Therefore God has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. That name we have. And that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow of those in heaven and those on earth and those under the earth and that every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of our God. So even if you fail, you have nothing. You have name of Jesus. You have, as I was saying last week, the blessing is on your hand. And as uh, the sister Margaret was praying this morning, hallelujah. You have something, hallelujah. You have something in your hand, hallelujah. Let's stand and, 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 and go into a time of prayer, hallelujah. And I ask John to come back. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. And you play something in our hands, O Lord. You've given us gifts, O oh Lord. You've given us talents, O oh Lord. We are born with a gift in O oh Lord for our purpose, O oh Lord. We are not empty, O oh Lord. You have given us, O oh Lord. You have blessed us, O oh Lord, with gifts, O oh Lord. From you, you have blessed us, O oh Lord. Deuteronomy 8:18 says, And you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is you who gives you power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant with it is what to your fathers as it is this day. The Amplified Version says, and you shall remember with profound respect the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you power to make wealth, that he may confirm his covenant which he swore solemnly, solemnly promised to his father. You're going to pray. First, we remember and acknowledge you first in our life, O oh Lord. We remember and acknowledge you, Lord, that you are our source. You are our song. You are the one that we lift our eyes to, O oh Lord. We remember you today, KICC Kenya. Remembers you today, O oh Lord. We acknowledge you, Lord, as our God as the source of our wealth. We decree that you are the source of our wealth. And you, our Lord, are the one that gives us the power. You're the one that gives us the power to work, O oh Lord, to make a living, O oh Lord, to prosper, O oh Lord, to have wealth, O oh Lord.
are the source, you are the one that gives us power, Lord. It is not our qualifications, oh Lord. It is not our, our status in the society, Lord. And We remember you, Lord. We affirm this morning, Lord, that you are our source, you are our Lord, you are our song. Mande brother, ye karabo sete, raba baba bayende. Ya karaba baba yete. Psalm 128, verse 1 to 3, says, Blessed is everyone who fears the Lord, who walks in his way. Verse 2 then says, When you eat the labor of your hands, you shall be happy, and it shall be well with you. You're going to pray, I will eat the labor of my hands, O oh Lord, of the work of my hands. I will eat the I will eat the labor of the work of my hands in the name of Jesus. I shall be happy, I shall be content, I shall be joyful in the work of my hand, in the work of my hand that you've given us more. We will eat, we will eat, we will eat of the work of our hands, O Lord, that you have blessed us, O Lord. We shall eat the labor of the work of our hands in the name of Jesus. As Pastor Matthew always says, we will not work as elephants and eat as ants in the name of Jesus. Working hard and not having enough to eat, that is not our portion. 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 It shall be well with us. It shall be well with us. It shall be well with us. It shall be well with our business. It shall be well with our education. It shall be well with our career. Rabba Shete, Nene Yende, Brado Dende, Reke It shall be well with us. It shall be well with us. Wherever we go, whatever we lay our hands on to, to do well, it shall be well. It shall be well. It shall be well in that office. It shall be well in that business. It shall be well in that shop. It shall be well in that university. It shall be well in that secondary school. In that primary school. It shall be well. Mandere bekete. Raba baba baba yende. Reke shete tetele bokondo. Mandere bekete shetele bakondo. Raba baba baba yanda. Rakata shetele bokondo. Rike bo shete. The Bible says. In Proverbs 22, 29, it says, Do you see a man who excels in his work? He will stand before kings. He will not stand before unknown men. You're going to pray that the work of my hands will bring, will speak before me in the name of Jesus. The work of my hands will go before me and speak before men and women and speak in the gate in the name of Jesus. The work of my hands will go before me and and speak in the day, speak before women, speak before men, Rabbi Shekhe, Mando Prokondo, even before I utter my mouth, the work of my hand, the work of my hand, will speak, will speak, will speak, will speak, will speak for me, in the day for her, before her father, before men, Mando Prokondo, before the power, in that interview, the work of her, We will excel in our world. We will excel in our business. We will excel in our education. We are not happy. We can be shamed. 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 Because of the blessing of the Lord on our hands, we will stand before kings. We will stand before presidents. We will stand before men and women in authority and the Bokoto Mitara Bosheti Rabba Baba Baba Yete Raka Baba Baba Yana Raka Bashondo Rebe Baby Bayeti Yakarabashanda Roko Shende Rebekinde Hallelujah Hallelujah We will not stand before me amen we will excel in what we do because of the blessing of the Lord. We will excel. We will excel. Your children will excel. You will excel in your business. And they will call you. They will call you. 
they will call you. They will call you because they have heard and seen of the good work of your hand in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, they will seek your heart because of the good works of your heart. In the name of Jesus, man, the problem of the land, God of the Son, our works will speak for us. In the name of Jesus, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. And I decree and I declare. Exodus 40 20 says, Then Moses took his wife and his son and set them on a donkey, and he returned to the land of Egypt. And Moses took the rod of God in his hand. I declare and decree your natural gifts, your talents, your skills, your business, your career will become a supernatural manifestation of God's blessing in your life in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. In 1 Kings 17, 16, the Bible says, the bin of flour was not used up, nor did the jar of oil run dry, run dry, according to the word of the Lord, which he spoke by Elijah. The bin of flour represented daily provision and supply, and the oil of joy represented anointing and celebration. I declare, I decree, provision, supply, anointing, celebration will not cease in your household or in your life in the name of Jesus. Araba Shaka, 1 Samuel 17, 40 says, Then he took his staff in his hand and he chose for him five smooth stones from the brook and put them in a shepherd's bag and in a pouch which he had and his sling was in his hand and he drew near to the philistine five is the number of grace unmerited favor mercy and divine enablement i decree and declare uncommon grace will accompany every work of your hands in the name of jesus Matthew 14, 19 to 21 says, And then he commanded the multitudes to sit down on the grass. And he took the five loaves and the two fish. And looking up to heaven, he blessed and broke and gave the loaves to the disciples. And the disciples gave to the multitudes. So they ate and were filled. And they took up 12 baskets full of fragments that remained. Now those who had eaten were about 5,000 men besides women and children. I declare and I decree the work of your hands and of your life yielded to the Lord will feed thousands upon thousands and generations to come in the name of Jesus. The work of your hands will feed your family and generations and generations to come in the name of Jesus. Luke 6, 5 to 6 says, but Simon answered and said to him, Master, we have toiled all night and caused nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. And when they had done this, they caught a great number of fish and their net was breaking. I decree and I declare by the power of the almighty God today, is the 21st of April. Harabasheke. Rabakoto Shetara Makondo. Kreba Shatara Bakanda Rabakondo. Breke Shanda Rabakata Rabakando. Robo Shetera Matara Bakando. Kroba Shanda Karabe. I declare today, the 21st of April, by the power in the word of, 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 of Jesus and the spirit of the living God. Every spirit, every pattern, every cycle of toiling, we bind in the name of Jesus today. Every spirit and pattern and cycle of toiling, we bind in the name of Jesus. 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 Name of Jesus. I decree and I declare with the kingdom keys of heaven, we release, we lose, we declare lawful in our life, net breaking, logic defying, uncommon abundance from our business, from our career, from the work of our hands in the name of Jesus. There will be a portion.
And I declare and I decree in accordance with Isaiah 65, verse 21 to 24. Ah, KICC Kenya, you shall build houses and inhabit them in the name of Jesus. You shall plant vineyards and eat the food in the name of Jesus. And I declare, and I declare that you shall not bear and another inhabit. You shall not plant and another eat. For at the days of a tree, so shall, so shall your days be. And you shall live and enjoy the work of your hand. And I decree and declare. Oh, you shall not labor in vain in the name of Jesus. Nor bring children for trouble in the name of Jesus. For you shall be the descendants of the blessed of the Lord. And so shall your children. And so, so, yeah, so shall your children, children. Be honored in the name of Jesus. And I decree and I declare on the, on the 21st of April today. It shall come to pass that before the call, the Lord will answer, and while you are speaking, He will hallow, we say it in the mighty name of Jesus, we say it in the blood of Jesus, we say it by the word of God, we say it in the Holy Spirit, in the mighty name of Jesus, we are praying. Amen and amen. So shall it be to us in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 You may take your seat. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I hope you've been blessed this morning. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Offering time is a blessed time. It's great and wonderful to give. Hallelujah. All the examples we were looking at, people gave first. They gave first and God blessed. Hallelujah. Psalm 119, Psalm 116, verse 12 to 14 and 17 to 17 to 19 says, What shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits towards me? I will take up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. Verse 14, I will pay my vows to the Lord. Now in the presence of his people, I will offer to you the sacrifice of thanksgiving. Verse 17, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. And I will pay my vows to the Lord. Now in the presence of all his people, Verse 19, in the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of you, O Jerusalem, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. This is the time for us, you know, to, you know, what can we render for all the benefits? The Bible says he loads us with the benefits, the ones we see, the ones we do not see. He loads us daily with them. Hallelujah. But I will take up the cup of salvation and I will pay my vows to the Lord now in the presence of his people in this midst you know in the church you know you're sowing your seed today so bring it with the as we were talking as we were shared last week with a heart of thanksgiving not grudgingly you know if you're bringing your tithes you're bringing 10 percent of your gross salary to the lord and as you do that you know the lord the bible says that he will open his windows of heavens he will you know um, and pour out a blessing a such a blessing upon our lives Amen. Paying tithes, I can tell you, works. Amen. Because it's a commandment from the Lord. It is a commandment. For, there isn't a negotiation to it. You know. He said, bring. He didn't say give. He said, bring it. Bring it to, into the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. And so that, you know, you will be blessed. And, um, and that he himself, you know, he will, he, will, he will be the one who will be doing the rebuking rebuke him for our sakes amen hallelujah we're just so thankful um so we get ready to to give our offering do we have a do we have a song yeah okay and um, it's in um, and we 
the person number is the pay bill number three two nine three two nine account number oh one oh one zero two eight seven six five four seven seven oh one if you're making checks you can make checks payable to Kingsway International Christian Center. We're going to still write checks. We're writing checks for thousands upon thousands, a hundred thousand uh, dollars. Amen. That's going to happen. Amen. Don't worry. You do, there's no shaking because if you're going to write a check for a hundred thousand, the Lord has given you a million. Amen. Hallelujah. So it's going to happen. So you don't need to worry. Hallelujah. So uh, the, praise, the praise team will lead us in a song and then. Um, you can come forward and drop your seed as well, and then we'll pray over the seed. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's rise up on our feet as we bring our offering. Thank you, Jesus. If you've used the device, um, you can hold it or you can stretch your hands. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you, Father, for the opportunity to give back to you. Thank you, Lord, for the breath of life that we have, that we can go to work, oh Lord, we can work, we can get up, oh Lord, we can go to our jobs, we can go to our business, oh Lord. Thank you, Lord, for first giving to us, oh Lord. You gave us, Jesus, the best, oh Lord, that you have, oh Lord. And we're giving back to you, O oh Lord, out of what you gave us, O oh Lord. We're giving to you, O oh Lord, Father. Thank you, we pray, O oh Lord, Father, that you supply all, every need that is represented here, O oh Lord. You supply, according, not according to man's way or according to the world's way, but according to the riches in Christ Jesus, O oh Lord. You supply all our need, all our mental need, our spiritual need, our physical need, our business needs, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus, O oh Lord, Father. We're so thankful, O oh Lord. We pray, O oh Lord, that as we bring, O oh Lord, that you will multiply, O oh Lord, what you have given us first, O oh Lord, what we are giving today, O oh Lord, Father. Let your hand be upon our lives and upon the work of our hands and our business, O oh Lord. We're so grateful. We're so thankful. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. You may take your seat. A few announcements quickly. Um, as uh, Brother Festus was saying, um, prayers on Tuesdays, on Saturdays as well, and uh, 
and the uh, crossover uh, prayers on Friday and the CHF, um, the Caring Heart Fellowships that was mentioned early. If you don't, if you're not a part of a, a Caring Heart Fellowship, please see, see Sister Livia at the end of um, the service at the back there as well. Morning Glow continues at eight, 8 o'clock Kenya time. And there's also um, by, by Pastor Matthew, as you all know, um, and uh, there's also Global Bible Study on Wednesday nights, it's 9 p.m. Kenya time as well. And over the last two weeks, Pastor has been reading these powerful, powerful testimonies um, of what um, God is doing in the lives of so many people across the world as well. Um, we, you had listened to the, you had the evangelism plans that we have as well. And um, um, before before you go, once maybe after you've taken your tea and coffee if I mean, we may ask you to just come back and uh, sit in the auditorium just a quick meeting with pastor fred as well so don't rush off yet you know once you go take the tea and coffee and then come back i hope you're pre you're pre uh, you're preparing for the prayer and fasting coming in june so yeah you know you've got another five weeks or so or whatever as well. some of you are saying oh my goodness oh my goodness yeah. fasting is good amen Hallelujah, amen. Any first timers? I any are there any people that are here for the very first time? Very first time, first time of worship being with us at the empowerment center. Anybody? Raise your hand. Anybody? 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 Oh, hallelujah. Can I ask you to stand? Just for one second, can I ask you to stand? Okay, hallelujah. You're so we're so grateful. Another round of applause for her. Hallelujah. Do shake her hand. Thank you, my sister, for coming today. We're so, we're so delighted to see you today. And, um, you know, uh, you're only a visitor for the first time after this. You know, look, you're welcome into this family if you don't have a church that you normally go to. Pastor Fred, who is sitting here majestically, would like to see you afterwards. So the ushers will, uh, will just usher you. We've got a special uh, drink and, uh, and snacks for you. And he will just share our vision, what we, what we do, why we do what we do, what we believe in, and our plans for the future as well. So it's great to have you here. Thank you for coming. Again, you may take your seat. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. So this week, as, as we end, you know, this week I was listening to, um, to, to the book of, um, while I was running, I was listening to the book of Job, and I never heard this ever before, and I've read it so many times. So as we, as we go home this evening, uh, this, after, uh, this morning, this afternoon, after, almost afternoon, almost afternoon, God gave me this, this word that it wasn't only for me, but I should share it. And it's in accordance with Job 5, 19 to 27. 19 to 27. And he said, he shall deliver you in six troubles. Yes, in seven, no evil shall touch you in the name of Jesus. In famine, he shall redeem you from death and in war from the power of the sword. Hallelujah. Verse 21 says, you shall be hidden from the scroud of the tongue and you shall not be afraid of destruction when it comes. Verse 22 says, you shall laugh at destruction and famine in the name of Jesus, and you shall not be afraid of the beast of the earth, for you shall have a covenant with the stones of the field, and the beast of the field shall be at peace with you. Amen. You shall know that your tent, your house, is in peace, and you shall visit your dwelling and find nothing amiss and nothing wrong in the name of Jesus. You shall also know that your descendants shall be many and your offspring like the grass of the earth. You shall come to the grave at a full age and a sheaf of grain ripens in its season. Behold, this we have searched out, KICC Kenya. Know it is true, hear it, and know for yourself. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his, his face shine upon you. May he be gracious to you, and may he lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace this week and going forward in the mighty name of Jesus we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Have a wonderful afternoon.